It's absolutely amazing to me how often I have clients sitting in front of me that listen to a professional that advise them to take certain actions that potentially could blow up in their face. Let me explain why. It's not just the black and white code sections that are on the books. It's the totality of tax law, including a bunch of legal doctrines that we're going to discuss shortly, that a taxpayer must comply with. Irregardless of the advice they got from their advisors, they're still held to have to comply with the law. To this end, the IRS and the courts subject one's tax plans to various tests or legal doctrines, which have names like the economic substance test, the sham transaction doctrine. These doctrines basically ask whether the tax strategy has substance over form, if it's done for a business purpose, and whether the transaction taken as a whole may be collapsed into one single step which would violate the step transaction doctrine. I will explain as we proceed. Again, these are some of the most sophisticated concepts in tax law, and they probably weren't discussed with you when that advisor lays out the plan that you're now in hot water over, but think about these. The economic substance test is a test where a transaction will only be seen as valid when it meets the following two tests. Entering into the transaction changed the taxpayer's economic position substantially in some regard other than just the tax benefits from taking that action. And the second problem is that the taxpayer had a business purpose for entering into this transaction or set of transactions other than reducing tax liability. The next doctrine to contend with is the sham transaction doctrine. Under the sham transaction doctrine, no transaction will be respected when the following is true where a transaction or set of transactions is carried out primarily to obtain tax benefits and there's no business purpose for structuring your transactions in that manner. Another doctrine is that the substance of a transaction determines its tax consequences, not the form. Substance over form doctrine. The business purpose test mentioned before, a transaction must have a business purpose other than purely tax advantages to be respected. Sometimes creative tax planners try and separate into separate steps uh, a transaction where each step in that transaction step is legal. But if you took the first step and the last step and you collapsed everything in between, if that final step between step one and step two, ignoring everything in between, is illegal, the series of transactions is illegal. It's called the step transaction doctrine. The bottom line in this area is to avoid too good to be true tax planning like the plague. Listen, if they roll out a confidentiality agreement and say you have to sign this agreement that says you're not going to discuss this with anybody else before they start talking to you about what they want you to do. If you are given a stack information that thick, which is a legal opinion from a law firm that's all mumbled jumbo to you, which basically says what you're about to do is legal and you don't understand what the heck they're talking about. Bottom line is if you spend a buck and that throws off $10 of tax deduction, you got a problem. Shouldn't have done it in the first place. If that's what's being looked at in your audit, you need to call me or someone like me.